presents Mercy Road by Anne Howard Creel, performed by Saskia Marlevelt. Tornado and I jumped the stone fence and landed fleet-footed in our far meadow. I let him run the way he had when he'd been a racehorse and so often placed first. Tornado exhaled ribbons of steam into the silent morning as the sun crested and our pastures glistened with dew in this, the bluegrass country of Kentucky. His gallop drummed the ground so beautifully, like a beating heart, and his black coat pulled in the dawn light and reflected emerald and gold as we left Favier Farm behind us and skirted the dense woods, where deer often appeared and disappeared like phantoms. We flew beyond the limits of our land, into the blue, and on to forever. It was but a dream, of course. Tornado was our most prized breeding stallion, a fierce thoroughbred with a regal nose and wide-set eyes, whose contracts for siring live births able to stand and nurse right away were the most valuable assets of Favier Farm. Risking an injury to a stallion such as Tornado was foolhardy, and my father might have allowed an occasional careful canter, but galloping at full speed and jumping fences were out of the question. In the dream, Tornado finally tired, and I trotted him back toward the green and white stallion stables, complete with steeples, where my father stood outside in the tall and distinguished way he had about him, waiting and watching. I lit Golois's cigarette in his right hand, its rich scent reaching my nostrils, as Tornado lifted his head in response to approaching his master. But something was wrong. My father's face, lined but still handsome, looked drawn and filled with loss, his eyes exhausted, as if he'd been searching for something, questions, answers, peace, that he would never find. A burning scent seeped into my brain, I opened my eyes to sudden consciousness. Tornado was dead. The dream vanished, along with its dozens of sensations, but the smell of cigarette smoke, or some other kind of smoke, was still there. Someone screamed. It was the middle of the night. I sat up straight, threw aside my covers, and hit the polished walnut flooring at a run, flinging open my bedroom door, I recoiled as a fumid haze hit me. Throat burning, my eyes stinging, I whirled toward the staircase. Then Papa's face appeared out of the vapor, an ashen oval marked by the two dark smears of his wide-open eyes. Wearing only his dressing gown, he'd taken no time to don shoes. He spoke my name in a surprisingly calm voice. Arlene! As he grasped my arm... The house is aflame. We must leave at once. What? I sputtered. The house is aflame, he'd said, so calmly as if giving me a report about the weather. Where are Mama and Luke? They are here. Now let us move. I blinked and saw Mama, who must have been the one who screamed. She'd managed to slip a perinoir over her nightdress and now clutched the banister as she crept down the mahogany staircase. My brother Luke, wrapped in a burgundy silk robe, followed. On the first floor, a dense blanket of noxious fumes seized my throat. Mama and Luke coughed desperately, overcome by the smoke, too. Gasping and choking, I stayed close to Papa. Only he seemed unaffected by the onslaught. Or perhaps he pretended to be immune, showing strength for the three of us. Mama had to stop and lean over her knees, wheezing and hacking her lacy nightcap trembling with the effort. Papa grabbed her arm, and with Mama and me pressed to his sides, he steered us into the center hallway. As I turned to make sure Luke stayed close behind us, I glimpsed through the smoke a scarlet inferno burning in our kitchen. Papa said, Move away! Keep moving! Quickly! Quickly! As he shoved us adamantly down the hall toward the front door, a heavy, seething cloud billowed in, so fast, so impenetrable. Yes, we had to get out now. I groped for Maman. She would need my help. But the heavy vapor clogged my lungs. I could barely see. 
I tried to breathe, my throat spasming in revolt. Papa gripped my arm and thrust Mama and me forward, together as if one, then pushed us through the front door onto the porch, Luke on our heels, Papa the last to exit.